Let me take a moment and talk about Riverside.fm. It allows you to record studio quality audio and up to 4K video. When you need to record audio and video, Riverside.fm can do it. So if you're looking for a hero platform for all your recording needs, from podcasts to webinars to any video content, Riverside.fm. I've got a promo code for you where you'll receive a 30% discount on the first three months of your subscription. I'll give it to you twice. The promo code is ship it. All one word, ship it, and you'll pick up a 30% discount on your first three months of your subscription. Riverside.fm. In this episode of the Football History Headlines, we discuss a sporting goods company startup as well as many more Hall of Fame legendary stories. And a special feature for this episode, we are blessed to have the Edinburgh University Pennsylvania Marching Band on this Best of the Pigskin Dispatch podcast coming up right now. This is the Pigskin Daily History Dispatch, a podcast that covers the anniversaries of American football events throughout history on a day-to-day basis. Your host, Darren Hayes, is podcasting from America's North Shore to bring you the memories of the gridiron one day at a time. So as we come out of the tunnel of the Sports History Network, let's take the field and go no huddle through the portal of positive gridiron history with pigskindispatch.com. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. How about that for some start-off music, some Great music from the Edinburgh University Fighting Scott Marching Band and uh, their director, Diane Smith, of the band who sent us that uh, piece and let us use that. We'll play the full song at the end of this program for you to enjoy because the bands are a big part of football games and the pageantry of it, and we want to make sure we can capture some of that. And hopefully we'll get some more great bands uh, that playing during this off season to uh, you can enjoy some of their music and just get those fight songs in your head because that is such a great part of uh, going to a college football game and this is Darren Hayes by the way of the pigskindispatch.com and uh, welcome to the pig pen once again where today we are going to talk about the great day of February 15th in gridiron history and you may not think there's a lot of history to it but we do have some great ones and we're going to get started right now with your football history headlines in February 15th 1929 a new sporting goods company is founded the Rydell Company founded by John T. Rydell the high school football coach an athletic director who started making a better, safer football cleats, and then he became a pioneer in athletic safety equipment. According to the Rydell's website, John T. created the removable cleat in 1922. Rydell himself is quoted on the website saying, When we started out, there was no history of the game. In wet weather, players have a foot problem. Leather cleats nailed to the bottom of a shoe just won't cut it. And if the local cobbler is too busy to fix them, then it's sorry, boys. It was this very necessity that prompted Coach Riddell and his action to eventually led to the formation of the company that bears his name. Today, Riddell Sports Equipment is found on almost every gridiron field. Helmets, shoulder pads, and their accessories are designed to keep players safe on the gridiron in this day and age. And we thank them for that. February 15th, 1996... NFL legendary head coach Bill Belichick is fired by the Cleveland Browns franchise. Coach B finished his Browns coaching career with a record of 36 and 44, and this opened up a gateway to much better opportunities. If you remember, he was with one day with the Jets and then took that job at, uh, I guess it was New England. But, well, you know about that. The rest is history with uh, nine Super Bowls and uh, six Super Bowl wins. Pretty successful career for Coach B since he was fired by the Browns. Now, we want to remind you that we have our Football by Numbers series going on. And we're going to take a day off today because we do have some great uh, history of the game to talk about on this day. A lot of birthdays coming up for this February 15th. But we will be back tomorrow, and we are going to have Dan Newman of the Hello Old Sports Podcast on the Sports History Network joining us to talk about the legendary number fours in the NFL throughout the NFL's 101-year history. And uh, it's a great podcast. I hope you uh, are available to join us for it. And if you can't do it tomorrow, do it the next day because it is a good one. Dan has a great discussion, very knowledgeable about the NFL, and we're looking forward to presenting that for you on the 
February 16th episode. And uh, we'll have, of course, some subsequent um, articles on the pigskindispatch.com. And again, if you want to check out all our podcasts, go to the pigskindispatch.com forward slash podcasts and you can uh, binge listen right there from that more of that in a little bit. So now let's go to your football history headline, birthdays of this February 15th. And we'll start off with these Hall of Fame birthdays. February 15th, 1903, Midland, Ontario, Canada. The great Southern Cal quarterback of yesteryear, Morley Drury, arrived into this life. The National Football Foundation tells how Morley was a signal caller from the Trojans from 1925 through 1927. Drury's finest season came in 1927. As a senior captain, he used his passing skill set and his legs to carry the Trojans to an 8-1-1 record. The only Southern Cal loss that year was a mid-season loss to the powerful Notre Dame Fighting Irish. 7-6 was that final score. At the end of the season, Drury was rewarded with receiving first-team All-American honors. The National Football Foundation selected Morley Drury into entrance into the College Football Hall of Fame in the year 1954. February 15th, 1920, Lawrence, Massachusetts. Harvard's solid guard Endicott Peabody was born. Peabody was a defensive disruption to any offensive uh, opposition that Harvard faced in the early 1940s. According to the NFF, his finest game may have been the one against Navy in 1941 when he forced one fumble and recovered another, stalling two midshipmen scoring threats to preserve a scoreless tie between the two squads. Endicott Peabody was honored with induction of the College Football Hall of Fame in 1973 after the National Football Foundation voters tallied up their votes. February 15th, 1931, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. John Michaels, the stellar guard from the University of Tennessee, gained a his born on date. John was one of the starting guards of the Vols from 1950 through the 1952 seasons, according to the footballfoundation.org website. John was a three-time letter winner, two-time all-conference selection, and in 1952, he was a consensus All-America. That year, he also won the Jacobs Trophy as the best blocker in the Southeastern Conference. John Michaels received the great honor of being selected for inclusion into the College Football Hall of Fame in 1996. February 15, 1935, Trenton, Tennessee. The quick tackle from Mississippi, Gene Hickerson, arrived in this life. Gene was drafted by the Cleveland Browns in 1957 so that Coach Paul Brown could use his quickness as a guard to employ some innovative blocking schemes to open up holes for the great Jim Brown, Leroy Kelly, and Bobby Mitchell. Hickerson was voted as an All-Pro in five consecutive seasons. He played in six Pro Bowl games during his career. In the year 2007, the Pro Football Hall of Fame enshrined Gene Hickerson into their Canton, Ohio Museum. February 15, 1940, Lawrence, Kansas. John Hadle, the outstanding halfback slash quarterback that played for the University of Kansas from 1959 to 1961, was born. The NFF's online bio of Hadle recounts that he made a 98-yard interception return against Texas Christian, a 97-yard kickoff return against Syracuse, and a 94-yard punt return against Oklahoma. His punting average for the season, 45.6 yards, led the nation. He played halfback in the 1960 and was voted as an All-American at that position. Then he moved to the quarterback in 1961 and made All-American again from there. John Hadle was honored with induction into the College Football Hall of Fame in 1994 after the National Football Foundation tallied their votes. Another birthday took place February 15, 1957, Bremerton, Washington. Mark Wilson, who was under center for the BYU teams of the late 1970s, celebrates the date of his birth. The National Football Foundation posts that in Mark's first game as a starter, he threw seven touchdown passes and a 63-17 triumph over Colorado State. Later that season, he set an NCAA record at the time by tossing for 571 yards passing against Utah. In 1979, Wilson was a unanimous All-American and named the Player of the Year by the Seattle Touchdown Club and the Miami Touchdown Club. The NFF voters selected Mark Wilson for entrance into the College Football Hall of Fame in 1996. Mark enjoyed an 11-year career in the NFL with both the Oakland Raiders and the New England Patriots. February 15, 1957, High Point, North Carolina. A fleet-footed halfback from North Carolina State, Ted Brown was born. The NFF tells us that Brown still holds the AC's career records of 4,602 yards rushing and 51 touchdowns. 
Ted was selected in the 1978 consensus first team All-America, and he helped lead the NC State team to three straight bowl games in his career. Ted Brown received the great honor of being selected for inclusion into the College Football Hall of Fame in the year 2013. February 15, 1960, born in Houston, Texas, Daryl Green, the speedy ball hawking cornerback from Texas A and I, was born. Green was able to cover receivers from the line of scrimmage, eliminating the short passes, confident that his speed would allow him to recover on deep patterns for the NFF. Darrell was also a first-team All-American in 1982 and was the most valuable player in the Lone Star Conference. The National Football Foundation selected Darrell Green for entrance into the College Football Hall of Fame in 2004. After school, the Washington Redskins used his first, their first-round pick in 1983's NFL Draft to choose Darrell to play for the franchise. Green spent his amazing 20-year NFL career all in D.C. and set an NFL record of having to pick in 19 straight seasons in the league. His great foot speed and technique led him to pick off 56 career NFL passes and return six of them for scores, along with 621 yards of returning yardage and 611 punt return yards. Darrell still holds a record for Washington's franchise's longest fumble return for a 78-yard touchdown. He was a four-time All-Pro and played in seven Pro Bowls. In 2008, the Pro Football Hall of Fame gave Darrell Green a much-deserved gold jacket and a bronze bust in Canton. And our final birthday comes from the College Football Hall of Fame, February 15th, 1968, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Major Harris, the West Virginia Mountaineer starting quarterback from 1987 through 1989, arrived in this world. The Football Foundation's website bio on Majors tells of how he was the first player in the history of the NCAA to pass for more than 5,000 yards and use his legs for more than 2,000 collegiate yards in his career. Harris led WVU to an undefeated season and a chance to play Notre Dame for the National Championship championship in the 1988 Fiesta Bowl. Major Harris was honored with induction into the College Football Hall of Fame in 2009 after the National Football Foundation tallied their votes. How is that for some great football history on February 15th? And if you like that, we have some more great stuff tomorrow. As we told you, we're going to be discussing in our series of Football by the Numbers. We're at the jersey number four on tomorrow, the February 16th release podcast. And we're going to be talking with Dan Newman, one of the hosts of Hello Old Sports on the Sports History Network. And Dan has got a great bit of information, some great stories to tell about the great number fours. And we come up with a a top list of uh, those great number fours. So make sure you catch that and listen to it. Um... And as always, you can join us on the Sports History Network. You can see Dan and his brother, Andrew, on the Hello Old Sports podcast, as well as you can find our podcast there and probably about 15 other podcasts that are just great with and filled with sports history and some really interesting hosts and guests. Uh, I think you'll really enjoy the personalities on there. So make sure you check that out, sportshistorynetwork.com. And as always, you can check us out at our home website, pigskindispatch.com, for all the gridiron history and use that power search bar we have that's powered by the Earl to go website it's a really great thing and you can see all of the sports history uh, web pages on there just by doing some search words uh, so check that out now to end the show just as we promised we're going to have uh, Miss Diane Smith and her Edinburgh University of Pennsylvania Fighting Scott marching band playing the Fighting Scott uh, theme song fight song uh, that's where I went to school and it brings up some great memories so just make sure you listen to that as we're on our way out so till tomorrow everybody have a great gridiron day having a hard time figuring out what to get dad for father's day you should check out row one brand's vintage pictorum gallery they have america's best sports art with over 7200 historic sports prints you're assured to find something unique for dad this father's day instead of a boring old tie get him a historic baseball photo taken by henry high sandum 
at the historic Polo Ground Stadium in New York City during the 1894 Temple Cup. Or, if he's an NFL buff, check out the 1963 vintage NFL poster. These are so good looking that you'll be amazed how they turn out. Shop now at sportshistorynetwork.com slash row one and save 15% off your order.